<laughs> Every camp has a theme song that requires you sing along. The more we keep on drinking, the better we'll start singing. Uh, if you like to drink, wanna learn to fix your sink. Seems like a functional thing. <laughs> Want to earn some badges <laughs> and unite with other badges. <laughs> Let's make a place that we belong. Sing the Camp Aruha song. We're going to Camp Aruha. But you really fucking hate camping. I do. <laughs> Can make a craft or have a beer. Craft beer. You'll learn some useful shit here. <laughs> That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> Let's make a place that we belong. And join the Camp Aruha song. We're going to Camp Aruha. <laughs> Two minutes, you were right. That's funny. Hello, campers! How are we doing tonight? <laughs> this is so weird. I have my homies and I have campers here. I'm literally in two places at the same time. Welcome to our Bubbles Camp. This is our first attempt at doing a hybrid camp where we're bringing both of these crazy worlds together and we're just gonna kind of fucking see what happens. So far everything's good, but we're just getting started. So welcome campers. I'm super excited to be back. We've had a roller coaster for the last two years. We've been in person, back at home, in person, back at home. So I am just super happy to see squishy happy faces in person and so glad to still have our at-home campers too. So this is an interesting one for me too because in September this year I announced that we were going to do glam camp because by September I thought we were going to be all dolled up going out dancing. <laughs> and then we ended up having it just online which was a fabulous event but every time I seem to get my hopes up about us getting out and celebrating and putting lipstick on and dancing the night away, it seemed to slip right through my fingertips. So anyways, even with this one, I thought in you know January, February, that come March, we're gonna be busting out the bubbles and ready to celebrate. Who knew things like, I don't know, a world war were gonna happen and sort of start to squash our celebratory feeling. So. Carla and I have been talking and figuring out, you know, how to still celebrate and uh, pop some bubbles, put our pinkies out for a night and still have some fun. And her and I were talking and it's like, now more than ever is the time to still celebrate. Get together with your friend, put a nice bottle of champagne on ice or a bottle of wine or whatever and take a minute and still celebrate and still let yourself be happy and smile and feel good for just a hot minute because we fucking need it. So tonight, we're busting out our bubbles, we're gonna get our pinkies out and have a little fun. It's also interesting for me because our first online event, for those of you who have been watching us for the past two years, was a wine ed event with Carla. Me and Carla and G9 decided that we were gonna just start doing online events without a fucking clue what we were doing. 
So our wine at event involved the three of us just sitting in my front room with an iPhone in front of us, <laughs> just drinking wine, you know, all excited, doing everything we could to, to bring camp to campers, you know, wherever you guys were. Two years later, I'm still finding corks in that room from that event, I think. So it has been uh, two years, and it feels kind of, uh, it kind of feels like, it feels special tonight to have Carla back on stage and the three of us back popping some corks and, uh, and having some fun in what is hopefully starting to be the better part of the last two years. So that is uh, why we're here tonight. And uh, I'm really excited to have some new campers in the room, some new campers and some regular campers online. And, um, and just try crazy shit, because I actually love trying fucking crazy shit. So this is exciting for me to see how this is all going to work. And um, that's all I have to say tonight. Uh, we have a discount code for campers uh, online, which I'm going to share with you guys at the end of our event. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro of our booze counselor, who uh, is going to be taking the stage shortly. We've got the J9 who has an original song first-ish. <laughs> Nothing's changed at camp. Um, and I'm going to do a little shout out to my, my our booze counselor, Carla, who um, tends to have a slightly more sophisticated palate than me. Shall we say that? <laughs> uh, Carla, not only with her wine, but even in life, tends to have slightly higher expectations than me which I love. Uh, Carla has always had a joke with me and my critter wine. If you guys don't know what critter wine is, it's when you buy a bottle of wine and it has a cute little critter on it, that is critter wine. <laughs> the cuter the critter, the worse you're gonna feel the next day is how she's always sort of talked about it with me. So Carla has always been the one that has pushed me in terms of upping my wine game. But she's also, I'm going to cry, nothing to do. <laughs> Carla also just has higher expectations for me with camp. We've gone to events before where we leave, and she looks at me and goes, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, you're totally right. It wasn't very good. So she pushes me to be better at camp. She pushes me to drink better wine. She has a super appreciation for you guys and loves to get up here and take the stage and uh, push you along your booze education as well. And she's a pro, so when Carla takes the stage, I can sit back, put my feet up, and know that we're in great hands. So we're going to have our booze counselor come up right away, but I'm going to pass it over to the J9, who is just writing some more lyrics on her iPhone as we speak. So campers, get comfortable. We have the J9 coming up, and then we'll let you, you guys at home are probably just drinking your bubbles already, even though you're not supposed to, but you guys go ahead, and uh, we'll get into some of the bubbly stuff soon. Is that okay? Okay. I'm gonna find that stupid pick now too. I think my cat took my pick actually. I think that's where it is. Um, okay, uh, Stacy wants me to sing Bang Me. Am I allowed to do that? Okay. I wrote this song for hair camp. Um, it's called Bang Me. <laughs> we were talking about getting your bangs cut and how Sometimes when shit's getting heavy and you feel like you need a change, you're like, I'm going to cut my bangs. <laughs> Does anybody here have bangs? I'm not trying to be rude. Um, they just look terrible on me. When I was in junior high, I, cut, I got my bangs cut because I wanted to look just like Jenny Garth from 90210. I didn't. <laughs> uh, anyway, so... I don't remember it. 
Uh, so this song goes out to the most important person in my life. And of course that person is my hairdresser. When I need a pick me up, I'm feeling down and blue. No appointment necessary, I go straight to you. Sometimes all it takes is a trim and a shampoo. Other times a blowout or pink highlights will do. But not this time, dear hairdresser, there's shit I'm going through. So grab your cape, tie back my hair. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bang me, bang me. Cut from cut my bangs and change me. I want my family to know they're not to fuck with me. Bang me, bang me. Cut my bangs and set me free. I want the whole world to see I'm a little crazy. I'm down for a blunt bang or a side bang held in place. A wispy fringe, I don't care. Come on, bang my face. I know I could bang myself and join the club. Or just watch amateurs bang on you, Shorn, or Shorn Hub. <laughs> Fuck. But my dear hairdresser, this sh shit I'm going through. So grab my cape. <laughs> but my dear hairdresser, the shit I'm going through. So grab your cape, tie back my hair. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bang me, bang me, cut my bangs and change me. I won't want my family to know they're not to fuck with me. Bang me, bang me, cut my bangs and set me free. I want the whole world to see I'm a little crazy. Bang me, bang me, cut my bangs and set me free. Step aside so I can see I want to watch while you bang me. Bang me, bang me, cut my bangs and change me. I want the whole world to see with scissors, sisters, you and me. Let's get banged! All right, okay, listen, you guys. I, just, I haven't written a new song in forever, and if you've been around camp for a while, you know that. But put your hand up if you're with me that COVID sucked the fucking life out of you. You have zero creative ability anymore. So I really tried <laughs> for the last eight hours. <laughs> so I'm a busy person, I'm a single mom, okay? I got three kids, I got a job. Come on, man, get off my back, I got a real job. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so Bubbles, I was like, that's easy. I already wrote a song about alcohol. I could do it again. I love drinking. I could do it again. So then I'm like, Bubbles, 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 Bubbles. And then that was in my head, Bubbles. So I need everybody to do this. And also I have to look at the lyric. But do it together in time. <laughs> Like this, like, oh, I, you guys are worse than I am. <laughs> it makes me feel good, actually. <laughs> like, look, it's probably not even. I had to take all my strings off my guitar and restring it last night, so it probably, I don't even know if they're all in the right spot anymore. Nope. Okay. So like this. You can do it. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. There's bubbles everywhere. There's bubbles in my champagne that I don't want to share. Those bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. They deliver like the stork. But you can't taste those bubbles unless you pop the cork. Oh, fuck. Keep going. Oh, yeah. You might like blowing bubbles for the popping noise. Or you might like blowing bubbles from the trailer park. Boys. <laughs> or maybe you don't like bubbles. You think they are the worst. Cause you just bought some real estate and the housing bubble burst. 
Bubbles, 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 there's bubbles everywhere. There's bubbles in my champagne that I don't want to share. And those bubbles, 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 they deliver like the stork. But you can't enjoy the bubbles until you pop the cork. You might have a thought bubble pop up in your head. Like, wow, did bubbles end up in my bed? Maybe you don't like bubbles, you think they are no fun. Like that COVID bubble, thank God that shit is done. Bubbles, 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 there are bubbles everywhere. There are bubbles in my champagne that I don't want to share. Those bubbles, 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 they deliver like the stork. But you can't enjoy the bubbles until you pop the cork. Bubbles, 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 there are bubbles everywhere. Thanks to COVID, there's a bubble butt in my underwear. Those bubbles, 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 they deliver like the stork. But you can't enjoy the bubbles until you pop the cork. So what's stopping? Let's get popping. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. I, somebody just commented on Facebook. They're like, best song ever. <laughs> You should just come up with an armpit fart one time and see if people still <laughs> love you. Let's get poppin' booze counselor Carla. It's time to uh, bring our booze counselor up and get you guys drinking. I just have to make sure I'm on. How am I doing, Liam? Good? No nose breathing? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Who recognizes that? All right, all right, all right. Campers, it's time to get popping some corks. I'm so sorry it's been so painful waiting until we can get drinking. Those at home are probably right on into it. They've got their knives out. They're ready to savor. We're going to have a little fun tonight. But the first thing I'm just going to, before I even tell you a story about me, you, you need a drink. <laughs> We need, we need a drink. And you know, a few things have totally come up tonight. Um, how are your wine charms? Did you guys like, like your wine charms? <laughs> um, I, I have to, my campers at the back, I think they look, some of the charms look like false teeth. So I, you know, I, I'm hoping that, that uh, those are the ones that make you uh, laugh and smile <laughs> without a few holes missing. Um, yeah, so okay, so what we're going to do is we have got, I've, I'm going to take you through some Italian Prosecco tonight, some Spanish Cava, some Champagne from France, we're doing the classics, we're really going to figure out, and I know that Mel has told you that, you know, you, you got to earn a badge, you're going to earn a badge. Drinking is one thing, but you are going to learn some mad skills tonight. I'm telling you, there's some mad skills about to happen. Um, and it's going to happen with my 10-year-old son's Japanese anime kunai sword <laughs> tonight. <laughs> so we're going to figure out how you can do this at home. It's as good as a butter knife or the bottom of your wine glass, I promise you. So I'm so happy I've got, oh, I've got a mic to trip over. Just put it over here. I'll be back in. Um, I've got campers at home, you guys. So the first one I want you to do is um, pull out your pink. There's only one pink one. Your pink, yep, your pink Prosecco. So those of you that got the bubbles at home, this is awesome. You're going to go through the mini tasting. So the first thing we got to do, because we have got to get this <laughs> into your glasses, is we're going to learn how to open a bottle. So uh, I have... I know that this is like interesting, but s for some reason it's terrifying <laughs> for people. I don't know why. Jen, we're going to figure this out tonight, okay? So there's always a foil. You got a foil, just like any wine cap. There's going to be a little kind of dotted ribbed edge around here. So sometimes there's a little clue on there where you can pull it. Otherwise, just get your good old fingernail in there. Get your fingernail in there. It's just foil. So we're going to peel the foil right off, all the way around. And then you can take this cap off. Now, these are super interesting. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so this is new. Are you guys ready? How do you think we're going to do this? Twist and pull. So I have one of these so it doesn't hit any of you in the face. But sometimes it can be like really, really... Did anyone do it yet? Did anybody do it yet? Just twist. <laughs> Just twist. <laughs> Just twist. <laughs> super easy. It's just a twist. <laughs> it's easy. Okay, so it's like, I know this was so terrifying for everybody, but we, we just needed to twist. <laughs> so get some into your glass. Get some into your glass. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so this one, this one we're going to talk about. So I just want you to sip it, sip it, sip it, drink it, experience it, experience the bubbles in your mouth, experience the little smell on there, and then we'll, and we'll talk a little bit um, about me. So why I'm up on stage. <laughs> we're going to learn some mad skills. I'm not just the booze counselor. We do a little bit more at camp. Um, but really, honestly, it's about finding what you love, finding a few little skills in the wine world that doesn't, it takes away that intimidation. So when I came into the wine world, you guys, I'm going to tell you, I had no idea what I was doing, what I was learning, and I was hired way back in the day based on my sales training. So I learned that there were many wine people in the world that could talk all day long about wine, and none of them could sell a bottle. So I, like, I just laughed. I said, well, it's just, it's a product. So in the sales business, what we need to do is learn our product. So I just got busy. <laughs> I got busy sampling wine, tasting wine, picking up wine books, um, and working for the, my very first experience with wine. Um, way back, we all have that story, Janine talks about it in her song. I was, I'll say I was 18, Mom, okay? I was 18. Um, but my parents used to make wine, and I called it hooch. I still call it hooch, but back in the day, if you had parents that made wine, and then they stored it, in their crawl space or basement or wherever that temperature thing was. And I, I, I don't remember why they went away, but they went away one weekend and I knew that this was down there. Now, the funniest thing for me was, I was like, we, I've got wine, we've got wine, I've got alcohol, we've got booze, I know that we can figure this out. And I had no idea how to get the cork out. I had no idea how to get into this bottle. Like, how do you get into the bottle? And the only thing that I could find in our basement were ski poles, <laughs> which is an excellent tool to pop the corks into the wine bottles <laughs> and get the alcohol out. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was brilliant. So that worked, and that was my first introduction. And you know, my parents, bless them, they still love their homemade brew. It's their fun stuff, and I don't poo-poo it too much, but they absolutely love it, and um, they, they tell me that, yes, I'm a little bit too sophisticated, too fancy, but what I say is we're fancy, but we're not fussy. So, right, we want good quality wine. We need to learn what that is, but, you know, if we have to drink it out of a sippy cup sometimes, that's what we do. <laughs> Especially at camp. You never know what kind of um, solo cup you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that was kind of my first introduction. And then when I became a little bit more knowledgeable in the wine world, I had to host a event that was a food and wine critic event. And I don't know if any of you guys remember, but there was a restaurant down in Bridgeland, and it was called Il Sogno and it was an Italian event, and I had this little five foot eight Italian man arriving on a plane eight hours across the, p the water uh, with a box of truffles. 
fresh truffles. I didn't know what those were either. And I had to just set up, there was this giant square room with these goblets of wine, like fish bowls. And I had to pour these four different single vineyard Barolos. And the chef was going to be pairing truffle with each one. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just doing what I'm doing, doing what I'm doing, setting up. It was f media, food critics, wine critics, everything. And so I set this room up. And so imagine this room. And it's small, but it's a square. And it there so every single plate had four single vineyard Barolos with aromas just going like this. And then these truffles started aroma cooking in the back. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> What is happening? Like the magic of truffle and Barolo was something I just, I had to learn about. So it was an amazing event. Uh, I still didn't know what I was doing. So I watched every single one of them, right? Picking up their, their wine, swirling their wine, smelling their wine, writing their wine, eating. And, you know, it, it, was, it was just, it was fascinating. And that's what kind of hooked me, got my love into it, and got me learning. And any one of you, when you find that little piece of magic, when you find that little something that is like, what is that? I want to learn more. Just trust that. Go for it. Learn. And it's all out there for you. And I really, um, that's how kind of I got in, into the industry. And, and I'm still in it. So I, I still have a, I have a wine club. I've shipped to some of my campers that you guys are all over the place. My gosh, this brand new Ontario chapter. <laughs> oh, giant box all the way to Ontario. I'm like, how much did that weigh and cost? But I'm like, you girls get in here it is it's a good time we're gonna get popping some stuff and uh and learn about bubbles tonight so that's just a little bit about my story so i do have a wine club it's on here you can find me at carla ruby red and at carla ruby red is my social but i'm not very savvy <laughs> on so, <laughs> <laughs> so i'm sorry i'll get i'll get better i'm getting better mel's gonna help mel's gonna <laughs> help me out with that uh, but but more, import more importantly, I just I want to find really great magical wines and then bring them to you. That's what makes me happy. So in my club, I'm like, I'm sampling reds, whites, rosés, bubbles all the time. I'm like, this is dynamite, this is dynamite, that tastes like dishwater, that's not going to make the club. Oh, I've got the worst headache on the planet, that'll never make it into the club. So that's kind of what I do. If you want anything like that shows up at your door, just ring me. We'll figure it out. But uh, so, uh, you know, on to tonight for bubbles. Mel and I talked about a little bit of celebration. What I want to tell you about bubbles, though, is it's not just for celebrating. We're going to celebrate tonight because we need to. But truly, we have got to understand that this is a sparkling wine and it can be drank every day. I drink every day. I'm going to say it again. I drink every day. There is a, <laughs> woo, right? So there's a bottle of wine open in my house every day. And that is how I grew up. It's just open on the table. You're going to try. You're going to learn. And if there's anything that you don't like ever in the wine world, just pass it on. Gift it. Send it to a dinner party. <laughs> There's too many amazing wines for you guys to get hung up on, oh my God, I didn't like that. That means I don't understand or I don't know wine or I'm just, I'm done. Just keep going. We are not quitters. <laughs> right, we've told you this before. So how are we finding this one? Are you drinking it? You're really quiet. <laughs> but that's because in like 20 minutes, <laughs> You'll be a little bit more happy, a little bit more giggly when we have some bubbles in us, right? Um, okay, so the first one, Mel, if you want to get to the first kind of slide. Oh, Liam's going to Liam's gonna get on there. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a few. The first thing when we think about, when we get into bubbles and we think about bubbles, oh, we just want to take a deep breath. We want to take a big breath. And we're like, life is hard sometimes. 
You can disappear the bubbles if you get close enough will go right up your nose. It's wonderful. It just like it, it you, the, you you don't hear the kids crying. You don't hear the f Mel calling. <laughs> and you just disappear. But we're just learning about we're learning about bubbles. Uh, here here's what you need to know. How do they make it? So if you're going to the store, some of the confusing thing is what do you buy? I know you're all familiar with Prosecco, am I right? Everybody's kind of heard of Prosecco. So if we look at the three, met three, I pick three of the most common methods for you to understand. So the traditional meth method is the most extensive, I'll say. Then you've got the Charmat method, which is in a tank, and then you know, you've got your Coca-Colas. So <laughs> what's I'll start at the soda method. So those of you that drink soda and or carbonated, it's just literally from a carbonate, adding CO2. You got your soda streamer? You've seen it, right? It just pumps <laughs> CO2 into there. It's large, volatile bubbles. Uh, but there, there's, your, there's your effervescence. <laughs> there's what you're getting, right? Um, when we move into the Charmat method, so it's tank. So in the tank, all of the grapes must, everything's in there, and it starts fermenting in there. And what happens is they'll just seal it. So they're going to seal it, and it's going to go through this fermentation, but it's going to trap the CO2. So it's going to trap it in there, but it's going to trap it in a giant tank. It's easier, more economical, and then they can put it into bottle. When we get into the traditional method, the traditional method, and you'll see they need to put the traditional method on, on the notes or in the bottle, or with, like, any champagne you're ever having is going to be in the traditional method. And basically what is happening here is you've got fermentation happening in the bottle two times. So it's very extensive. So they're going to crush all the grapes, and we're going to go through each one as we go. They're going to crush all the grapes. It's going to go into the fermentation, into the bottle. So it's going to all go in there. Yeast is going to happen. The sugar is going to eat the yeast and poop out alcohol and carbon dioxide. And that's <laughs> where we get the first one. But what do we do with all the dead yeast? So there's all of this yeast in there, right? And so what's going to happen is maybe you guys have seen in Champagne, or if you've ever been, it's a, in a riddler. A riddling machine is like a bunch of holes. Now it's mechanical on these massive pallets. And they're going to stick the bottles like this. So what they're going to do is put just a crown cap. It's going to be like a beer cap on here. And so what's going to happen is it's going to ferment in the bottle, but all of these dead yeast seals are eating, 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 and pooping. <laughs> no, it sounds really bad. <laughs> um, but what they're going to do is every, like, kind of, they're just going to keep doing a little quarter turn like this. So a little quarter turn every, like, s once in a while. And all of that stuff is going to fall down into the neck of the bottle. And so what happens is you end up with this, like, plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly a plug. <laughs> and so what happens is, is these all, so that's all the stuff you want out of your <laughs> champagne and your bubbles. So they're going to freeze that and blow it out. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. They <laughs> blow this stuff out. And then what happens is we got a bottle that's kind of missing, right? So what happens is, is this, we're going to learn a little bit about dosage. So if you've got your favorite champagne house, like Veuve Clicquot or Moet, Moet and Chandon, it's just the entire advertisement is be fabulous. Just be fabulous. You know all the pictures where the girls are like mouth half open? And they're by the Vespas. <laughs> and it's just be fabulous. So we're just going to be fabulous tonight, OK? And so the dosage is the grape must and the sugar secret blend that they make by the Champagne House that they refill in the bottle. And then they're going to they're gonna cork it and cage it for you. So that's what we're going to go through. That's your traditional. There's your little basic. So your first one that you've got is Italian Prosecco. So are you done that bottle yet? 
You should be. <laughs> okay, so your Italian Prosecco. This is the Canela. Now, this is the Italian government finally approved rosé in Prosecco. So here's what's confusing about Prosecco. A lot of people are like, what's Prosecco? They just as attribute it to their bottle of bubble, Italian bubble. It's actually a geographical region, but it also used to be the name of the grape, but it's not actually. So the name of the grape, which they changed, is Glera. So Glera is the grape in your Prosecco. So, and they did this back in about 2009 because they didn't want the world making Prosecco because Prosecco was known now as this Italian bubble, but it could, it's like, you know, the poo-poos in France want it to only be called champagne if it comes from the champagne region. So the Italians were like, oh, this is all Prosecco. We cannot, this is my bad Italian accent. They only just wanted it, it comes from this region, but it's actually the Veneto region, and we don't want people making Prosecco in other places of the world. So this is the Glera grape, and what's really interesting is this one I picked for you guys tonight is a rosé. Now the rosé, I'm telling you, is like literally just probably hitting our shelves. You have never seen a pink Prosecco until maybe January 2021. Like maybe like this year, 2022, is when you're gonna start to see more of it. And that is because there's some very strict rules. So the, the rules have to be followed. You've got to have only 10 to 15% Pinot Noir is what they'll allow in there. So that's gonna give that little bit more strawberry, a little bit more cherry, a little bit more berry flavor in your Prosecco. And honestly, um, if you love Prosecco and you, it's the only thing that you've been on, it's, it's just an Italian sparkling wine. It's fabulous and now it's in rosé, but we can branch out. We can branch out, okay? Okay, um, so this one, the other rules are that this one is Charmat method. So this one is only done in the tank. So that, those are the rules, it's pretty simple, and it's only gonna be made in two styles. This is a Brut Nature and an extra dry. So Liam, you can switch the slide there. <laughs> We're gonna talk, who knows about all those labels when you're like, what's Brut, what's going on? I don't wanna step outside. Okay, so this is telling you, can you guys see how much sugar? is in there so that's just broken down for you so it's just really a level of sugar in your bubbly so when you're looking at brut nature you, that is the absolute least amount of sugar that is going in there but there's still a little in there so don't kid yourself um you've got x then you've got extra brute you got brute and then you've got extra dry dry and demi sec so yeah, if you had to be careful, right? You think it's dry or extra dry. You're, you're, you're up there. You're pretty much up there. A lot of people are worried about sugar. Those are your calories. If you're in keto, <laughs> we're kind of busting out a little bit. Um, but don't freak out because uh, honestly, it's something that is just, it's necessary. And in bubbles, when you talk about sweetness and wine, it's completely different in sparkling wine. In bubbles, it has everything to do with the dosage. So if you did not add that, sh that sugar must dosage, that little liquid secret sweetness, like they think they're Coca-Cola or something, it's like their special formula. If you didn't add that back in, it would be unpalatable. It would be undrinkable. It would be like highly acidic lemon juice. So it's just finding you know, your special sweetness. So if you love that special house, it has a special level of dosage in each one. So that's, that's kind of what it goes for there. Yeah, so cheers. There is your, that's your Italian Rosé Prosecco, the Canela.
Did you get the right one? Yes, yes, the right one. Okay. So what's really funny is those of you at home don't can't see, but here in the group, um, none of you have turned over your red solo cup. <laughs> Your red solo cups were for spittoons, for dumping, for stuff you don't want. And, you know, Mel always makes me put them out here, but I was like, nobody uses them. Because I always say, down the hatch. Okay. Okay, so we're good. So, okay, so the next one. The next one we're moving on to that we're doing you can switch it, Liam, thanks. The next one is Kava. So who's familiar with Kava? So this is like super exciting. So if, if you're like, ah, if, you're, if you're thinking you love sparkling, you love champagne, but you don't want to pay the price, we like go into Kava. So Kava has been making amazing uh, sparkling wine in the traditional method, like champagne. So it's extra labor, extra time, but it's like a fraction of the price. Camp it's camp champagne, is, yes, is what we call it. <laughs> Campaign, camp champagne is kind of what we do with Cava. You know, like if you are, if you, uh, I mean, there's a saying, if, if you're champagne, you're, you're very important. <laughs> very, very important. Um, if you're Prosecco, you are fun. You're fun, Prosecco. We love you. You are fun. But if you are Cava, if you are Spanish Cava, you're having a goddamn little siesta and then you are dancing on the tables. All night long, all night long, and this is affordable, okay? So I think we're going to do a little dancing on the tables at summer camp. That'll be our camp champagne, and it's great. Okay, so this one, this one is the Anna. We'll just, Anna's easy for you to say. It's this super awesome little white bottle. Cordon AU. This is a Blanc de Blanc. So where are my French Frenchies? Super funny. So this is Spanish Cava, but Blanc de Blanc, you're going to see sometimes, is white on white, white from white. So basically, this is a white sparkling made from only white grapes. Okay, so you know how to peel the foil now. Are we peeling? Are we ready? Oh, I heard a pop. <laughs> okay, we're popping. Pop. Oh, okay, this one's got a cage. What are we going to do? <laughs> Let's let shit fly. Okay, so here's what you need to know about a cage. You bend out, bend it out. This is very specific, even for the minis. Six is your number. Six is your magic number for turning, okay? One, two, three. Four, five, six. Every pop, yeah! Every single cage, six. So you can safely take the, the cage off. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Lots can go wrong, but take, you can take the cage off. <laughs> I hear so many popping. It's so good. So, so here's one of, the, one of the keys to opening, is you want it to... <laughs> You want it to make a little kissing noise. I'm hearing like pop, 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 pop. Okay, <laughs> but if we're gonna, if, okay, pop, I love popping. I love you and I love popping. So we're gonna keep it there, but I want you to know that if we're going to like fancy it up a little bit, if we're going to be like, just find our little uh, tall spine, our little sophistication, just a little bit, we're gonna hold the, the and we're gonna twist the bottom. So we're going to twist the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going to make a kiss. Right? Beautiful. Beautiful. So just a little kiss. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so most of them are caged. The minis are, will be the only one that we're seeing that's uncaged because there's maybe not as much pressure under the small bottle. Yeah, but that one was caged. So pouring, pouring your bubbles. If any of you guys have followed some of the, the camps and the wine nets I've done, you're going to see I drink sometimes out of the coupes. Have you seen the coupes? You know, the beautiful Mary Antoinette breast-shaped glasses? They're so beautiful. And, but these are what you have. So the key to pouring is you want a nice, steady, single stream down the middle. So if you can do that, oh, the giggles are coming. I told you. Troublemaker. So straight stream down the middle. This is a wine glass. This is not a flute, so it's not showing, you know, as sexy as I would like. Um, but yeah, so a steady stream should allow you to pour. And you, we're, we're looking at like, don't go crazy, no more than like three quarters of the glass in there. But you should be able to pour a one straight pour without the, it foaming over on you or going a little crazy. The key is to have it cold. Campers, we got to have it cold. Okay? Okay. So, anybody been to Spain? Oh my gosh. You're so lucky. I've never, I haven't been to Spain. It's on my list. It's on my dream. Camp Hoo-ha in Spain. Maybe we'll charter. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be a Kappa camp all day long. It'll be amazing. But we are in the Panetas region. We're kind of just south of Barcelona. Barcelona? I don't know why I only feel like my mother, who's a teacher, is like that you have a lisp. That is not right. We don't speak like that. But it's truly how we, how we say it. Um, OK, so this is what's cool is another traditional method. But so now we're going to Spain. We've got the same method as champagne, but we've got different grapes. So this one is predominantly Chardonnay, which are traditional, but your indigenous varieties in Spain. Anybody know what those are? They're a tongue twister. Macabeo, Peralada, Jurelelo. Okay, it's crazy. Jurelelo. X A. It's just like blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so look at this. So we're in Spain. This one, so it's something to, I want you to think about as we kind of progress. So we're sort of progressing from that tank method to this a little bit more expensive traditional method with the, with the grapes and the Chardonnay. You should notice something different. How, how are we smelling, enjoying? What are we thinking? Dessert. Dessert. Okay, so you, uh, what are you getting? Chocolatey. Nutty. Definitely nutty. Yeah, so we're going to get nice so that those yeast and those toasty and those oaky flavors, that's coming, those are coming from the yeast and the, the yeast and dead, dead leaves. Dead leaves. Yeah, so are the yeast, dead yeast cells are called leaves, L-E-E-S. So those are, what the, those are the ones that float to the bottom that we want to like blow out of there, okay? Okay, so do we know how to hold a glass? Have we done this for? Okay, so this is no. Okay, <laughs> this is this is where Mel always has me. I'm gonna I gotta have to take a little break to show you. So I want you to pretend we're all at a wine tasting. We're at a wine event. We're we're tasting no spitting. <laughs> we don't spit. We don't spit. Okay, so I want you to kick your chair back. Well, I want you to stand up and just grab your glass of bubbles. Tall spines, big breaths. Okay, just grab your, grab your glass of bubbles. Everybody's up. Okay, and now I want you to just, without any judgment, we don't judge a camp, I want you to just look around and see how everybody's holding their glass. No switching. <laughs> no switchies. No switchies. Okay, do you see how everyone... So some people, like, like, my, like my lovely mother, she, like, she just fists the whole thing. <laughs> I love you, Mom. But she just fists the whole thing. It just gets the glasses filthy, everything is dirty, and, and just it heats up the glass. 
okay, right? Um, okay, so the other one, if you see, if you see anybody, anyone like this? Anybody like this? Oh my God, if you see anybody like this, you run like hell. You just run away from them as fast as you possibly can, okay? These, these ones think they know everything about one. <laughs> everything. It will be the most boring conversation you have ever had in your life. Run away. Okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so the correct way, you want the stem. You definitely want the stem. Now, as you've heard Mel talk, I'm a bit of a pinky out person. Any pinkies out? Any pinky? So pinky out people, I think, are, I think, pinkies out people are really interesting. If you see some pinky out people, go talk to them. They're just like, go and just be like, they're just pinky out people. You know, and a little, another little safe, another safe one is tucking the pinky under, under the glass. So it's just a little bit safer, right? Okay, now when we are, when we are cheering, the key is to cheer on the, on the bulb. So a lot of people lean in and cheer the lip. That's the finest part of the glass that we don't want to shatter. And we don't want our, like, disgusting lipstick <laughs> from somebody else on our glass. So we cheers the bulb. So cheers. You did well. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, Stacy's a Stacy's a two finger. Maybe you're a two finger. You're a two finger split. And it should be fairly simple, right? With this, this is a tasting glass. This isn't this isn't even our proper wine glass. But I'll tell you when I when I took um an amazing opportunity, I was in South Africa and I was hosting a show about wines around the Western Cape. And I was amazed at how sophisticated and exploratory they were about glassware. And I know glassware is like a kind of a big deal, and it can be a big deal, but they were like just these hand-blown things that were like so thin, I could go like this, and they would bend. And the stem was like a stick of glass blown. And I'm like, I, I didn't even know how to touch it and how to how to drink from it because I was so it, like it just felt so delicate so it is it is amazing glassware can really change your experience and how you hold the glassware and how you know you're experiencing the whole thing it's it's like they've perfected when you take a sip where the wine hits your mouth on the palate mind blown boom I was like that is fucking fancy like, that's fancy. And I'm fancy, but I'm not fussy. <laughs> so how do I reconcile this? So anyway, so that's interesting. So think, I don't know, you'll, you'll notice it next time. I know that next time you're out, and now that we can be out and probably get into some wine events and wine, or, you know, things that will happen around the city, like, you'll just, you'll kind of notice. But the stem is proper, and just have fun with anything else. Pinky's out. Okay. Cheers. Are we good with that one? Down the hatch. Okay, so the one, one last thing. So now, you, now you've had Prosecco and now you've had Cava. So hands up for loving Prosecco. And hands up for Cava. Oh my gosh, you guys are like totally split. That's amazing, right? So you're kind of learning about what kind of bubbles you like. So we're going to think about the sweetness level. You're going to think about the grapes that are going in it. You're going to think about the method. And the other thing is how long. So with Spanish wines, uh, you've got three styles. You've got, um, I'm trying to remember if this one, this one is a Reserva. Actually, it's funny. It calls itself, calls itself a Brut Reserva, but you've got Brut, Reserva, and Gran Reserva. And basically all that means is how long it's been aged. So the longer we age it, the better it's supposed to be. That's what the whole rule is about. That being said, the majority of wine is bought within one hour of purchase and drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
which is why a lot of Spanish wines don't even release their wines until they've been aged in their bottle. So a minimum of 15 months. When you get up to the Grand Reserva level, you're three years before you even see it hit the shelf. So if you're looking and shopping and you're buying this wine and you're like, Jesus, it says 2015. That's vinegar by now. It's not. So they can't even release it until it's been aged properly. And then and like they want it tasting when you open it from when you buy it. Perfection. So those are, those are your levels. This one is called the Brut Reserva, which is then somewhere in between Brut and Reserva, which is between 15 and probably 26 months or something like that. So, okay, yeah, likes, dislikes, that kind of thing. Okay, are we ready for champagne? The pops are cute, aren't they? You guys like the little mini bottles? So... This is, a, this is a big deal. So mini bottles are 200 mils. It's, what is that, six ounces? So if you, you know, want to drink bubbles, if you want to get into sharing with, you know, a friend or um, like my girlfriend just bought, she just got three little minis and a gift pack for her best friend's girl who turned 18. You know, like they're, they're cute little gifts. They're nice that you have so it doesn't feel like such a, a commitment. And I know that it is like, it's sacrilege to like cork a water bottle and put it back in the fridge, but you can do it. So if you can't drink a full bottle, then you know, you've got champagne stoppers, but just go for a mini, go for a little mini and it's, it's perfect for two glasses and then you're gonna progress. So I think it's, it's something fun and it's just people just don't know about it. You know, it's like this big commitment of a sparkling wine and then you need, you need to have like a celebration for it or you need to have a, a huge group and you just don't. You just, you go for the minis and it's fun. Okay, so champagne. Oh, we are fancy at camp with champagne. <laughs> Mel doesn't know how much this one costs yet. Okay. Uh, Liam, what, what did I miss? Because <laughs> I usually just talk. Okay, we'll get to that one. I'm sure there's some complaints. Okay, so champagne. Those of you who know champagne. I mean, who, dr who drinks champagne? What do we drink? What are you guys drinking if you're drinking champagne? Are you yellow Vuvuzlans? Are you Moets? Are you, what are you buying? Is anybody buying champagne? Who the hell can afford champagne is what I want to know. And what do you do for work? <laughs> oh, right? Okay. <laughs> just, we're just going to get some badges and learn how to like saber shit. Um, okay, so, so champagne. Champs. Champs. If you hear this, this is the fancy. We've got champs. So we're going to have some champs. And so this is Pomery. So I'll tell you my one story about Pomery. This is the pop. So a lot of champagne houses I find, so when I tour it a, a little bit around champagne, if you guys go, it is unbelievable the kilometers of underground cellars. Cellars of art champagne bottles from like bef beyond time, right? And so the history of champagne is remarkable. Uh, Madame Pomery is w women in sparkling and champagne, so I, I do love this. But you know my po my my famous Pomery story, but my famously embarrassing pom <laughs> Pomery story is I so I was working and we were hosting a big champagne event in Vancouver. I'll never f remember the restaurant, but uh, we were doing this big event with bubbles, saber, doing everything. And it was still open to the public. And I don't know how many glasses of champagne I had already had. <laughs> and I noticed Ben Stiller <laughs> walk into this, you know, this pub lounge restaurant, the cool vibes, right? And it was like everybody freaked out. And I was like, oh, well, we have to talk to him. We have to offer him some wonderful champagne. Why, why wouldn't we do that? 
And so, you know, gorgeous, lovely, funny Ben Stiller, he was, you know, he came in and, and, uh, and I just, I went right up to him like, oh my gosh, I'm a huge fan. We're pouring this amazing like bubble in the back room. I would love to, uh, to bring you a glass of champagne. He's like, no, 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 I'm good. Like, thank you. You know, you're good. Thank you. No, no, no. No, no, I, I, no, you, you, I'm going to bring you some. And uh, you're going to try it. It's really good. You're going to like it. Like, it's, it's, I, he's like, I, I, like, I'm just meeting my friends. And I'm like, okay, I'll find you and your friends. I'll find you and your friends. Like, I'll bring you some, some bubbles. And so sure enough, <laughs> he's like, oh, my God, fuck. Okay, right? And so I came back, and I had, like, I literally had a flute like this with this beautiful, you know, uh, glass of bubbles. And Ben Stiller... He was standing there, and, and he was standing there with his beautiful leather jacket hanging over <laughs> his arm like this. You know, he was taking his coat off, and I, yeah, I did exactly what you can fucking imagine. <laughs> was like, oh my god, <laughs> splashed like all over his leather jacket, all over him, and th and then I was like, two X's, I'm um, lights out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still mortified to this day because I so love him. I'm like, oh my God, I was that girl. I was that person. But like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, did I think I had a chance? <laughs> or what was I doing? Did I have a chance? Like, was I like, okay, 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 thank you. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you for thinking I had a chance. <laughs> Anyway, so that was, yeah, I'm sure he'll never drink Pomery ever again because he'll remember that stupid girl in the pub. Um, okay, so this one, we're in the traditional method. Have we, have we peeled? Is there a peel? <laughs> is there a peel on this one? Oh, yeah, dig in with your fingernails or your teeth. There it is. Okay, we have a cage. Are you counting with me? One, two, three, four. Five, six. <gasps> Woohoo! Okay, so I'm I'm right-handed, so I tw twist the bottom with my right. Whatever you are, you're gonna s hold here. That was the last one. This one has anybody got anything left? Do you want to try and pop pop this one? Okay, so if we want to do a pop, we just you just want to twist a little so it's loose. And then we're going to thumb it. <laughs> so, we're <just> <laughs> so we're just thumbing that one a little, right? And then <laughs> so if they, if they get a little sticky, you just want to thumb it, kind of, you kind of, kind of move it around. But that one was pretty easy, right? That one was pretty easy. Okay, <laughs> not in your face. Don't, oh, uh, that, it's not beer pong. It's not champagne pong. <laughs> you try to get your corks in your glasses. <laughs> summer camp will do champagne pong and we'll try to get the corks in the solo cups. Oh my God, we have a new game. Oh my God, <laughs> and it's cheap. It'll be cava, cava pong. <laughs> Okay, so give yourself a little pour. Okay, and we're going to talk about some chomps. Oh! <laughs> they, we, we had a late bloomer back there. <laughs> okay, awesome. So typically... When we're drinking wine and tasting wine, we swirl it. So have you ever wondered, I'm like, do you swirl, bu swirl bubbles? Well, why not? Do you get rid of the bubbles? Do the bubbles go away? Okay, then don't swirl. <laughs> the swirling is just as for aroma like it is for wine. So. Give this one a sniff. Now, so when we swirl and we sniff this one, 
Um, I just want you to know, so this is, we're talking traditional, we're talking champagne, we're talking three times the price, we're talking, this is designated for this tiny little region northeast of Paris called Champagne. So there's all of these sparkling wines all over the world, but you cannot call it Champagne unless it's from the Champagne region. So it's made the same way. So your traditional Champagne grapes are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. So when you have a Blanc de Blanc Champagne, it's going to be all white from all white, so it's 100% Chardonnay. You could have a Blanc de Noir. That would be an all red grape wine. It's still a white Champagne, but it would be made from the Pinot Noir grapes or Pinot Meunier. So any color you're getting is from the skin. So even though you have a Pinot Noir grape, or, or maybe you guys didn't know that all the grapes flesh inside is clear. All the color from the outside will come from how long they leave it macerated on the skins. <laughs> Balsac, what? <laughs> macerated Balsac skins? Janine, stop it. <laughs> I know we'd like to macerate some ball sacks right now. <laughs> you poor husbands out there. Oh, dear. Okay, so when, when we give this one a sniff, so, yeah, so in your flute glasses, you're going to have a bit more of a steady, you'll notice the steady stream, but if you can catch a little bit of mine, you can catch a little bit of a, a, stream, a stream of bubbles. So tiny bubbles should give you a tiny mousse. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little sniff, a little swirl, a little sip, and we're going to, just a little one, and I want you to give it a mouthwash. We're going to get a little bit of mousse in there. It's foamy, right? So what you will notice is the tiny, tiny bubbles is just the more delicate bubbles you want to look for. If we're doing like that tank method or soda, if you guys swish that stuff, <laughs> you'd be foaming at the mouth <laughs> and you'd be choking and you would be like, I'm never coming to Bubbles Camp again. <laughs> this is terrible. But yeah, champagne is something that is kind of, and when we, when we swish it around and we do a little mouthwash when I do, it's to evaluate the quality. And so when we do it again, we're going to do it again, and then you're going to have it hit all sides of your palate, back of your mouth, top of the palate, try not to choke, breathe through your nose. <laughs> oh, too big of a sip. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, we got a problem over here. <laughs> problem in the corner. No choke. You're not choking. You're still laughing. We're good. So yeah, so take a sip. We're gonna have if you swish it around and then we're we'll swallow it and then just sit with it. When we just you kind of sit and savor, and you can just have a moment. You're gonna evaluate: is it in balance? Is it too much fruit? Too much acid? Is it too sour? Is it like do you like bread, biscuit, toasty, and nut nutty? What do you think? What do you think? Are you guys at home on cocktails already? <laughs> You're like, we're into port. We've moved on. <laughs> we're having steak in port. Um, yeah, so I don't know. So this one for me, you guys, it's, so it's champagne. It's just you are, you're upping the quality. You're upping the price. It's definitely the more famous pricey region, but is it blowing your brains out? Is it blowing your hair back? S sometimes, yes, there's the expensive ones. There's the ones who have expensive taste, right? It's like, oh my God, this is like next level. This is next level. So you can find that. You're going to spend the money. You're going to spend at least, you're going to spend over 40 to $50 for a good bottle of champagne. Can we do that all the time? Not necessarily. So you've got a balance now. You've got Prosecco. Um, you know, what are you guys making mimosas with? Does anyone make mimosas anymore? 
Shh. Oh, oh dear. We're, we're making Kirkland Costco. That shit's going to kill you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's probably some blue label Lamarcas out there. Oh, okay, okay. But like, just know how you feel the next day. Notice how you feel the next morning. And sometimes, so a lot of people ask me like with wine, why I'm getting headaches. I'm getting like, you know, like I'm waking up in the night. What, it, what it, these are some, uh, some big complaints, right? As women, we are not quitters. And so we need to find another way. We need to give up. So these are some of the, some of the things that, uh, this is a reputation wise as champagne and bubbles go. Number one, your headaches is you don't feel thirsty. The carbonation and the bubbles make you feel like you're satiated and you're good. Drink water, drink more water. So my water, wine, water, wine, water bubbles. This is what I've always, I've always said. And here's my trick, and it is a trick. When, especially if you're wine tasting, if you're out wine tasting at your wine events, you get your like, piddly ass little taster, right? You're like, what is that? Like that is like, what is that? So you do your little taster and then you go to the next one and the next one next because it's so small and you just keep going. And then before you know it, you've had like quite a few. And then you don't actually remember what you tasted or what was good and like what you'd ever buy again. And so <laughs> the key is, and I do this at home as well, is before you fill up, you fill with water in your wine glass and you have, and I'm telling you, I'm like, oh, you have to drink your water before you get your next fill of wine. And I want my next glass of wine. I want my next pour, but I have to drink that. And so I'm like, okay, I drink my water. And then I feel, okay, I'm allowed my next glass of wine. And so keep the same glass doing this. And I know it is very customary, very traditional in a lot of places that it's rude to have an empty glass, right? You know, you get low and they just keep filling up. You get even a little bit, they just fill up, fill up. And then you have no idea <laughs> how much wine you've actually had. And so I'm telling you, just do one it polite, politely say, I'll just have my water before I have my next fill. And we have to take care of ourselves. If there's anything I can tell you, it's self-care. And self-care is not waking up at two in the morning cursing your damn wine. It's your fault, not your wine's fault. So stop blaming the wine and get yourself in order, drink your waters in between, and then you're good. Well, that's part of it. Okay, so the next one <laughs> is you drink more. It's very quaffable. So do you notice how easy it is? And I don't know like what that is, but there's something about the bubbles and something about champagne. It's like, oh, it's just like, I mean, I shouldn't say that just about bubbles. I do that with all wines. <laughs> it's just quaffable. It's easy. But think about if you're having one of those awesome big cabs or Syrahs or something like you're sipping with dinner. You're like, you're not quaffing a bottle of really heavy red wine necessarily. I don't know, maybe you're out there. <laughs> Hashtag me if you, <laughs> we need to talk. Um, so that's another one. You just, you drink more because it's quaffable. So just be mindful of the bubbles that way, right? You, you can take down a bottle of bubbles pretty easily. Um, and the other thing is, a lot of people say because you drink later. This celebratory thing like New Year's or it's later in the night. And so that sugar bomb hits you <laughs> maybe a little bit later or you're like when are you drinking bubbles so i always like i love it as an aperitif so an aperitif with your charcuterie with your sushi your sashimi your white fish your shellfish truffle popcorn amazing anything fried burgers french fries fish and chips so those bubbles are going to either, number one, clean the palate, so it's a great starter, or number two, cut the fat in anything kind of like that. So it's a great thing to serve if you are just, you know, you're having a little like appies, charcuteries, you know, pick a bubble in there. Um, and that's great. 
The other thing is, uh, it's not on there, but I always, you know, because it's so controversial, is, is for me, it's like sugar. Like, I'm telling you guys, that La Marca, oh, feels like I've been hit by a truck <laughs> the next day. And people love it. So it's just not doing well for me, but it might, it might do well for you. $9 might do so well for you. <laughs> 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 and we can erase the rest. Oh, I pay wholesale. Sorry, that's cost. <laughs> okay, so what, what are we on next, Liam? Oh, look at that. Okay, so we're sabering. Okay, so who, who's sabered? Couple? How did it go? What could go wrong? You missed the target? What? <laughs> We have a girl on crutches who sabered and missed the target. It was suspect. It was very suspect. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, if any of you guys saw in, in Mel's super funny feed, it was like, do we saber? Do we not saber? What could go wrong? And, you <laughs> and oh my God, so much could go wrong when we saw the videos. We saw the videos and so much can go wrong but so much can go right. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, this could be, this could be our, like I always say, the big swing and dick moment, but it could be our big swing and vagina moment, <laughs> right? Like it, this, could, this could be like, this could be our moment. Um, so it's, it's really important. And so I've got, I've got kind of six steps. And I'm just thinking, okay, so yeah, what have, if any of you guys have seen, I brought, I brought my son's sword today. But the truth is, is like a butter knife or like the end of your wine glass can do it. So I'm going to take you through. I'll just, I'll do a demo. And then I, I think just for fun, like I'll do the big bottle. Yeah. And then Stacy, I thought Stacy should try a small one for fun, <laughs> a mini. Do you want to do the big one? Okay, so Stacy's gonna come up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna coach her through it. <laughs> coach her through it. Okay. Okay. So see your the, your that's your pink line. Yeah, that's your mark. So, I want you to hold that, and we're, for, we're just going to, like, do at least, like, look at this. That's real sexy. Okay? Yeah. That was, like, my slow-mo. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the first thing. Yes, we're going to take foil off. So, no, you're just going to listen to me. I'm going to coach you. Okay. <laughs> I just, this is so amazing. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing, first step, your bottle has to be cold. Okay, first step, cold. You've got to have it cold. You a limp one. <laughs> a limp, <laughs> exactly, limp deck. Okay, so the second thing you have to do is you've got to remove the cage. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to peel that foil. Dig my just dig your right. finger in there. Don't start twisting. Well, sorry, I just, I got soft nails. <laughs> You can use your teeth, I guess. <laughs> you can use I your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to wreck those either. <laughs> okay, come a little closer to me so they okay, can see. My hands are wet now, so it's yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Janine, do you want to try and catch it? <laughs> okay. This is going to be for the prize. Janine's going to try and catch it in the bucket. Okay, <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Good. Okay, let's take all this ugly stuff off too. Okay, so you got the cage. So now the key is to have, so a lot of people, the blade, the blade. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be limber, man. Like volleyball stance. Like you gotta be ready. You don't know where it's gonna go. So are you right hand, like what do you wanna, okay, you're right. So you're going to put the saber in your right hand. Okay. 
Now the key is you're going to hold the bottle on a 45 degree angle. I don't do math. Okay. <laughs> the first thing that's really, really important is you need to find the seam of the bottle. Right there. So do you have the seam of the bottle? Right there. The, the seam. seam. Oh I want oh you to look know. and f oh look around, look and find the seam. Okay, so do you see where the oh, okay. see where the bottle was fused together? Line. There's actually a line. Okay. This is your guide. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle. 45? Yeah, that looks good. What do you think? Uh, I don't good? know. I didn't do real good in the whole fraction. Okay, so yeah. you're going to turn the sharp end of the blade toward you. You want the blunt end. Okay. Okay. You got to be strong oh, here. Sorry, it's been a while since I've held anything fun. Like You've been holding ch holding children. I You're know, fine. Like okay. So now what the key is is the seam runs all the way up the bottle to the lip. Okay. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> I wore my tight underwear. Okay. <laughs> so when you find the seam, you're going to hold it here, right? So just practice. It's you're going to go up one, two, and when we when we do it, not yet, because I have another trick. We're going to follow through. One, two, three. And we're going to follow through. Go. Yeah. Okay. We'll try it. Okay. <laughs> so okay. So. Who gave me a knife? <laughs> so one of the one of the tricks I learned, and this will be key to you guys. So I would need you. You remember how I said I was don't be limpy here. You, you, you saw the people that got scared and like dropped it in the water. Yeah, I saw that. Like you saw that one? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be th fucking strong, strong. Mm. right? This is our vagina. I it takes a beating. We know that, <laughs> right? Okay, so the cool thing is, is just because it's under pressure, I want you to go give it a couple, a, se a secret little tap with just underneath, sharp? just a gentle, this Here? is like my secret kiss. Oh, with the sharp edge? No, the other end. <laughs> I'm really like Okay, yeah, that's good. Just a little bit of yeah, cuz we want to just like say hey, I love you Wake and up. I want you to do well. Wake up. Okay? So find the seam and I want you to go 1, 2 and then hard follow through. Like right now? Yeah. Okay. 1, 2. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. 1, 2. Oh fuck. <laughs> good. You still got it. That's good. Tap it a bit more. What, what could go wrong? Okay, ready? <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. And you're sure it's on the sharp edge. Got it. Okay. One, two, fuck. <laughs> Stay on the seam. On the seam, I lost. Okay. Well, don't lose the seam. <laughs> Never been good at this. You're doing it. Okay. <laughs> tappy tappy. Yeah, tappy tappy. <laughs> 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 Okay, no. <laughs> Good girl, you do. Know. <laughs> okay. I did it. I you did it. <laughs> you did it. Okay, now you get to go take that. Serve the girls. What? Yeah, take the bottle. <laughs> Don't drink out of the bottle. <laughs> Just pour it in your glass. Janine, how do we do it? Do we catch it? Oh, come on. You're so dramatic. <laughs> there it is. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so okay, so we did it. You did amazing. Thank you to Stacy for it can be it's really it's exhilarating and absolutely terrifying at the same time, right? But all we can do like anything, like when you're out there camping, just grab a bottle of bubble. Just start hacking at stuff. It's just practice, and it's just confidence and being strong. And you guys all have it in you, all of you. Okay. So cheers. Where's Jane? Is she still here? All right, we are at our we're at our over we're over time now. So this was uh, this was super fun. I am curious to see how our at-home campers have enjoyed this experience. 
And I was thinking about this earlier. I'm like, if somebody was like, hey, you're going to suddenly do online events for two years, and then we're going to have you do online events with people in the room, my mind would have probably exploded. So this was really fun to try. We've got a great group of campers in person. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you guys Jane, awesome. get up here. You and guys did uh, awesome. I'm so excited to have my team with me in person and get to hang out again. I love you guys. Hi, we have hi, the best. <laughs> <laughs> I already did earlier. Thank you, Carla. You're the best. We love uh, all the wine education you bring to us and you make everything super I'm fun. I'm here for questions too. I'm yeah. here for questions. Carla's going to take questions yeah. after. And I wa also want to give a thank you to Stacy, Jen, who was our volunteer tonight, Diana, who's our amazing part of our team. <laughs> Liam from Folk Festival has been producing our event, so... Oh, seriously hit you? <laughs> Thank you, guys! I'll announce more camp information uh, we'll for you, you guys. Uh, tomorrow we have skivvies <laughs> going on sale for our Calgary campers, which will be April 27th, so I'll share more details about that tomorrow. And uh, this was really fun! Celebrate, you guys! Small celebrate. moments! Pop yeah. a bottle! Have fun! Have fun! Celebrate! Cheers! We'll see you guys soon! Yeah, and I'm here for questions. If you guys have any, if you want to take any little mini bottles home, I have more you can take. And yeah, anything you kind of wine needs you need or questions. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs>